Hello and welcome to Synchronicity, talk radio for your mind, body, and soul. I'm your host, Marie Bernard, and you may be watching this live or on the video on my YouTube channel. We're broadcasting from Google Hangouts on air, and if you're listening on the radio, you can also check out the video at youtube.com forward slash spiritual show. But if you are listening from the radio, then we're broadcasting from CITR 101.9 FM in Vancouver, which is on unceded Musqueam territory at the University of British Columbia campus. Or you might be listening online at citr.ca, cosmicdimensions.com, empowerradio.com, or on the co-creator network. And wherever you're listening from, thank you for joining us today. And we are speaking today with Catherine Bell. She is the author of The Awakened Company. And we are gonna be talking all about The Awakened Company, Awakened Economies, and how important it is at this juncture in our history to start moving towards that. So welcome to the show, Catherine. Thank you so much, Marie. It's great to see you, and thank you for having me with you. Thanks for being on the show. So let's talk a little bit about um, your background. You are a recruiting professional. You, you recruit professionals for companies, correct? Yeah, so Blue Era, our vision is to help build evolved and awakened teams, and there's three pillars that we have, and that's executive search, team transformation, and coaching. Those are our pillars. Um, we uh, have been recognized as one of Alberta's best workplaces and are also one of Canada's fastest growing companies. Awesome. And you know what is far more important is we have a ton of fun working together. As you, hey. you just saw, you know, from a few moments ago. Yes, Catherine got locked out of her office while the camera was running and her co-workers were taking pictures of her trying to get into her office. <laughs> uh, and everyone was pitching pitching in. You know, everyone just came, oh, what needs to be done? And everyone just comes and helps. So it's uh, it's been a really, really fun, fun journey. Yeah. Awesome. Now, you were on CTV News in Calgary yesterday, and you were talking about, um, first of all, how failure is an opportunity for for learning and growth but while you were talking with the host you mentioned that when you were in your 20s you were like a lot of people living paycheck to paycheck and you knew you had to make a change so can you tell us a little bit about that situation and how you got yourself out of it yeah so I'll give, paint a little bit of a, a picture. I was in my 20s and my job came, my um, boss came to me and said, you know what, I don't think this is the role for you. So, you know, when you get that news, I kind of sunk. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm being let go. And it kind of, and she was right, that my heart was not fully into it. Marie, yet getting that news was really, really hard on me. Um, and I realized I had some choices to make. I could stay in the same type of um, organization and kind of be okay, maybe, or I could take the opportunity to go inward and consider what is it that I really and truly, how can I really serve the world? How can I best help the world? And and in that, of course, I'm included. Um, so did a lot of self-exploration and then decided based on that, that executive search was really what I wanted to do. And so what turned out, what I thought was bad luck turned out to be good luck. So it's interesting how Life can, life is truly our greatest teacher and life can throw us some really challenging things. And it's really the, to know and to accept whatever that is and whatever our soul is meant to learn from that experience. And you might say, oh, I'm talking about business, but I'm talking about soul. Well, I don't see it as two separate things. So yeah, it was really, it was a challenging time and a great opportunity for me to learn. Failure is just perceived failure. It's really important for us to have that perceived failure because is it really failure is my question. 
it's really just an opportunity for more learning. Well, and it's only failure if you completely give up, right? Because one mis I mean, you learn from your mistakes and then you keep moving forward. Yes, yes. And, and are we keeping that open mindset to keep moving forward, to keep uh, expanding instead of shutting, shutting down? It would have been quite easy for me to shut down or become complacent and follow the, well, this one path that I was on, but I felt like life was teaching me something bigger. Awesome. I, I was actually thinking about that last night while I was reading your book, The Awakened Company, and how I have been looking for the right place, for my right place in the world that not only is something that I'm passionate about that helps other people, but also I can flourish and pay the bills and do the things that I want to do. And I remember going to see some career counselors and saying, look, I have all of these talents. I do the show, I do all of that. And I, I need to carve out a place for myself in the world. And they just kept saying, well, you should do this career, this career, this career, like things that have already been done. Mm. And they really just, they got so mad at me when I was like, no, I don't feel like you're hearing me. Like they just kept trying to squeeze me into a box. Like at one point they said, I, sh I, I said I was thinking about starting a dog walking business and they said, oh, then you should become a dog groomer. And I'm like, no, I don't want to shave dogs. I want to work. I, I mean, it's so weird. So when you're searching, uh, when you're doing the executive search, do you do any kind of career counseling? What does that look like um, when you're searching for someone? So we don't do career counseling per se. Um, and it's interesting because I just think we, we can create our own futures, you know? So if you have a passion for dogs, and one of my friends actually did do this. She had a passion for dogs and she did create a whole business around dog walking, not dog grooming, not any of that, but dog, dog walking. Um, and she was actually the one who first noticed when our dog was not well, which is interesting. Anyway, um, in terms of executive search, we are hired by our clients to find the best people. And people often think the best people are the ones that have the technical skills. But I have a mantra. People are hired for technical skills and fired for personality. So to me, we need to put the balance back into let's hire people who who believe in the values of the organization, who believe in the noble purpose and vision of the organization who can contribute to the organization versus kind of checking the boxes on the technical skills. Catherine, do you only work with companies that have a noble, noble purpose? Because a lot of companies, their purpose is the bottom line and that's all their purpose is. This is a very hot topic. Um, for me right now, so often I go in and I ask the CEO, so what's your vision? Number one, they may not know it. Number two, they uh, will say, well, it's to make X amount of money by X date. Like things, Marie, that don't capture the heart, minds, souls of people at all. And then, and then they wonder why they failed. You know, you've heard me speak of the data before, like over 75% of businesses don't survive past 10 years. And 80% of our people are disengaged. Well, as leaders, it's our responsibility to not only um, help create the noble purpose, because I believe the noble purpose actually has to be co-created it can't just be the leader putting it on people. Everybody in the organization has to feel it and believe in it and be, it be part of their, almost their blood. 
Um, and that's what we see when we think of great companies like Patagonia, like they create a reason to come to work every day and meaning and, and interesting, challenging, meaningful work. Um, so do all leaders have a noble purpose? Absolutely not. So I think this book, The Awakened Company, it's a huge opportunity for organizations to really step back and say, hey, why am I in this? Because I don't think any leader wants to fail, Marie. I don't think people are intending to do harm. So the book is meant to really help senior leaders and leaders and CEOs find that, that path to help build culture. It's interesting that you you say that you, that people want. It sounds like your your opinion of people is that for the most part, people are good. They want to do good in the world. They want to have a purpose. They're not intending to hurt anyone. Unfortunately, a lot of these companies where money is the bottom line, they do end up doing heinous things to the to the planet to. People, I mean, even one example in the book, and this has been, I just recently bought a new cell phone and I'm feeling really guilty about it because I know that the people making those phones are so miserable, they're literally flinging themselves out of buildings to the point where those companies have had to put nets around the buildings so that the poor people can't even escape by suicide. They're literally slaves. Yeah. And even, you know, Harish Hand uh, spoke about this when I interviewed him. He's the CEO of Selco, Marie, and um, he said, it's even in our language. When we say we want to hire somebody, that's slave language. Hmm. We want people to join, not hire. And when Harish said that to me, I thought that was a very, very poignant point. Um, the system of business needs to be rebooted, needs a restart. And ultimately, I think the way we're going to solve these, the greatest challenges that we face are by working better together. I believe in organizations and I believe in people. And it's a sick system, as is evidenced by the evidence that I've given with the 80% disengagement, 75% of organizations not surviving. There's nobody that really wants that. So we can, we can do better. And I think one of the key messages in the awakened company is how, do, what is an awakened company? And it begins with ourselves. How are we conscious and aware of who we really are? And then how are we aware of our relationships, and by relationships, I meaning our one-to-one -one relationships, Marie. Because often people don't take the time to have those one-on-one -on -one meetings. And the reason why most people leave is because they, if they're a uh, direct supervisor. And most people rank doing chores as uh, more worthwhile than spending time with their direct supervisor. Hmm. Then we get to, so kind of an awakened ripple. It begins with ourselves and our relationships, then our teams, then our organizations and community. And it has a, and it's all inter, it's inter experienced. We can't be isolated in this. And even, even just like today, like who's listening to this? It's you and I having this experience. And not only that, it's a technology and environment that's holding our experience right now like there's so many beings involved in the manifestation of this moment and just to really for me to appreciate it and to take that in awesome and one one of the uh, organizations responsible for this is google which you mentioned quite a few times in in your book um and they are as far as companies go, one of the more awakened ones, I would think. Right now, we are speaking with Catherine Bell. She's the author of The Awakened Company, and you can find her at awakenedcompany.com, right? That's right, awakenedcompany.com. And, and Periscope. You're on Periscope. <laughs> See, the, here's an example of the inter-experience. Thanks to Marie, I'm on Periscope. <laughs> um, I'm on Periscope, and... Twitter, and I'm learning all of these technologies as I go, I have to say. 
Facebook, LinkedIn. It's really important for all of us involved to get the word out to as many people as possible to relieve some of the organization, some of the suffering in companies. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things I was, I was actually, I saw a post on uh, Facebook yesterday and I got really excited about it until I found someone had posted something else about this company. Um, it's a grocery chain. Apparently, they, after I think a thousand hours of working for the company, employees are able to, uh, they're given stock options. So they're actually owners in the company. They're invested in it. They have higher pay, um, much better. They're much happier employees and it's a much better company. But what I'm noticing is even though there's some companies that do this awakened thing and they engage people, but what? I, but but then there's this documentary about the farming industry and about the about big supermarkets, and farmers in Florida have asked to pay one penny per pound more, so that I mean the 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 slavery conditions on these farms is beyond anything that you could ever imagine in in our modern times in North America, and the company will not do that. So I don't get how how it is that a company can be so on board with making the world a better place and then something so simple, they refuse. I mean, the difference that that would make for those farmers and those farm workers is huge. And they just turn a blind eye. So why is it that companies sort of get halfway on board but not all the way? That's a really good question, Marie, and in essence, we're all in the process of awakening that this isn't ever going to be an end state, that it's kind of like the job, the job loss that we were speaking of earlier, that it's all an evolution. Yeah. Nobody is is perfect. Now, I saw what you posted, but I'm not familiar with the um, with the farmers' conditions, etc. So, um, I can't speak to that uh, example. Um, however, the question is, what is there for that organization to be learning, and what can we do? What can we all do? And what's you know, Julian Barling said to me during. The interview with him, he's a professor at Queen's, a thought leader on leadership, is what is the smallest thing we can do? Because ultimately, Maria, it's about a whole series of small acts. Our lights just went out. I don't know what is happening, but, <laughs> but uh, my apologies. I now look like I'm slightly aglow. <laughs> so what's the smallest thing that we can do? Wonderful. Well, I wanted to ask you um, about, you, you talk about it in the book, um, but there's this thing, system, I don't know what, what you'd call it, um, Enneagram. Mm -hmm. you, and apparently it's quite a big movement. It, it is. The Enneagram is a system to understand ourselves. It is like a roadmap to who we are. And it's not a static roadmap. It's a much more fluid map. It's a, a map of uh, who we are, what our greatest fears are, what our greatest hopes are. And for people in business, it can really help with self-awareness. So who, who do I have to be to get to where I want to go? So in terms of our noble purpose, who do I have to show up as? To, um, to get to where our noble intent is. And the Enneagram provides a clear roadmap uh, of what happens when we're stressed, what happens when we're under health, and how we can evolve or devolve from there. So for example, I'm an Enneagram type eight, and the name for me is Challenger. So, I like to challenge the status quo 
and I can be um, very uh, strong in my opinions around challenging the status quo. And the trick for me is to keep on to re keep on remembering to open my heart and to keep thinking about things because I prefer to act over uh, over feeling and thinking. So it's provided a roadmap, to kind of the integration of the centers, the body, the heart, and, and the mind. So there's kind of a fourth way of doing. And I, I can only hope that when people in organizations are familiar with this way, that our decisions and the consequences of our decisions will be far more conscious than they would have been otherwise. It, um, and a way to, for people to remember um, kind of the, the, the gut, the heart and the head is they say pe leaders lead with their hearts, their heads and their hands. So just when we're making a decision just to stop and pause, what am I feeling right now? What am I thinking right now? And what am I doing right now? Beautifully said. And you are also uh, a yoga teacher and you're one of your co-writers on this book, Christopher Papadopoulos. We, I interviewed him last week. He's the author of Peace and Where to Find It. Right now we're speaking with Catherine Bell. She's the author of The Awakened Company. Um, I have just this advanced reading copy, but you had a nice one on the news yesterday. Um, Nice hardcover, shiny one. And I'm curious. Here, I have so, one of both. Just a second. Wait, just a second. Okay, yeah, you can show us. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, Marie, I'm going to show you. I have three because there's. Oh, wow. Okay, so here's the Awaken Company. Beautiful. And then we have Christopher's piece. And then we have Russ Hudson's Wisdom of the Enneagram. Yeah. So there's the three of us. Cool. Uh huh. And are you, you all work with Blue Era? No, we don't. So um, we uh, Christopher's in Montreal, and Christopher is, as you know, very active in in peace. And Russ is currently. I think he was last. He was in Japan. Uh, teaching the Enneagram. So, interdependent dependence, or interdependence, I guess that would be. Cool. It's interesting, um, this is kind of overlapping with a lot of the work that I've been doing in relationships. I've interviewed some psychotherapists who work with mutuality and the, the way our brains are wired. And that interdependence is really important in romantic relationships and familial relationships. But that's the thing is it's we keep it separate when it comes to business is business, money is money. And instead of having that mutuality, it's good for me, it's good for you, it's good for our customers, our suppliers. It has to be good for everybody. If someone is losing out, then really ultimately nobody wins at the end of the day. Precisely, and we're all losing out. And just back to what you were saying about um, everybody comes from a family system. So for example, when I started with uh, Blue Era, there's Shahana and Carolyn, and Shahana and Carolyn mirrored my two sisters. They were the same personality types as my two little sisters. So we can pretend we're all business as business, but really we're bringing it all in. As much as we want to have the illusion that it's separate, we're bringing it all into us, all in with us. Business is not separate from the rest of our life. And it's, it's, it's interesting because when we bring up uh, self-awareness with executive teams, Marie, they say how much it trickles into their personal lives and everything that they touch. Of course it does because we're not separate. We're, we're in this together and we have certain patterns that the Enneagram and other tools help us to become more conscious of. And then once we're more conscious of them, we can make better decisions. 
around how we want to work together and behave together and be together. Catherine, it's my understanding that your target market for the Awaken Company are people who are in business, executives, CEOs, that kind of audience, correct? That's right. So how are we going to get CEOs <laughs> of, let's say, the Dirty Dozen, the big, big corporations that are sucking the world of all that is good, how are we going to get in there and get that to change? Because if, if those companies changed, the world would change. And I believe that everybody wants a world, not everybody, most people want a world where everybody thrives. And I just think that people are really trying their best, Marie, and often they just don't know. And there really is a knowing doing gap. So for example, what we know from the research is that a third, <clears throat> when you look at companies, a third of their energy should be spent on metrics such as finance. And another, the two thirds should be focused on actual culture. Well, and you might say, well, what do I mean by culture? Culture is mercurial and culture cannot be repeated. It is, as I say in the book, the secret sauce. And what do, what do I mean by culture? I'm meaning engagement. What are our relationships like? What are our values? What's the organizational mindset? And what's interesting is when you put that all together, the results are phenomenal. So I think once organizations see that and, and people are like, oh, it seems so hard. No, back to what Julian said, what's the smallest thing we can do? And I really don't want, I believe corporations are the way and organizations and organizing differently are the way to solve our problems. So I really, somebody said to me, oh, Kath, you're anti-corporate. No, I'm not anti-corporate at all. What I am is I'm for people working together well in a different, from a different perspective, i.e., Marie, I care about you. Let's create something different together versus acting just in the name of profit. And I think our whole concept around short-termism has to go, you know, like whether quarter by quarter by quarter, that's how, and I think as we have to look at it from so many different perspectives. Number one is why are investors demanding that? Number two, why are employees putting up with this? Why are we still driving, uh, you know, why, why are we traveling so much? Like we have to ask ourselves some fundamental questions about our own behaviors too. I don't think corporations, I, I believe that most people are really doing their best. They may just not know. Well, Catherine, it's interesting. Um, you ask why are employees putting up with this? And I, and I think that part of the problem is that they feel stuck. Yeah. I mean, yeah. In, in this economy right now, a lot of people I hear saying, well, I'm really unhappy but I'm lucky to have a job. So I would, uh, I would really ask back to my experience earlier. I had no idea that that experience would be so helpful, Marie. And at the time it was really awful. Um, I would suggest that they really go inward and rumble with what's going on with them and feel into what is it is that they truly want? And I sort of blew out my credit card. <laughs> like, like, let me just tell, like, I started it on my credit card. Um, and Shahana did as well. So I just, I just don't, it breaks my heart to know that so many people are disengaged. I think we can all do better than that.
Awesome. Well, we are speaking with Catherine Bell. She is the author of The Awakened Company. This is Synchronicity Talk Radio for your mind, body, and soul, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on the radio. Thanks for joining us today. And Catherine, um, you mentioned how it all starts within the individual. And yet there is a culture, I mean, our cult, the culture, Family, the culture of our society, the culture of our company. I was working with a, a nonprofit organization a while back, and I noticed the culture. And people would come in with these great ideas and inspiration, and wanting to make a difference in the world because that's what the the company was all about. At least that's what they said they were all about. But what happened is that over time, those people would have their souls sucked. They would either conform to the culture and make the company has been getting worse and worse and worse over time, or the, the great people who didn't want to participate in that would leave. So what is a person who doesn't want to conform and sees the value in the company? How, how can the middle person make a difference? Because crap flows downhill. Like you said, people leave because of their supervisor. That's so right. if your supervisors are, nice to put it nicely unconscious how do you how do you still make a difference in your own way in that culture um you're absolutely right marie the um the tone for organizations is set from the top in fact i went and sat uh with the occupy on wall street to understand what they were about and then it made me realize the importance of having leadership. So, you know, having leadership and that internal leadership. And again, if you could just picture an awakened ripple, you know, that begins with ourselves and extends to our relationships and extends to our teams, to our organizations, and using that framework to begin with, what is the smallest thing we can do? What is the smallest thing we can do? And bring it right back to the present moment. Because the present moment is all that we have. The other thing, Marie, that I really want to highlight is that I think it's important for people to know that there's a negative correlation between CEO pay and company performance. So uh, it's, it's important for people to know because one thing I would look at and in public records is how much is the CEO making? And how much? Sorry, <laughs> no. right, you give me that whole Occupy Wall Street is all about the government bailed out these companies because they were broke, beyond broke. People were losing their homes, and then all those CEOs took home a bonus of taxpayer money. They lost money, and they still took their like two million dollar bonus. That's ridiculous. It's completely unacceptable. It's a crime. It's what it is. It's a crime. It's, tr it's true. And so my question is, we need to do better. And how can we do that? Which is why um, the Awakening Company was born. You know, I started it, this writing this book. It took over seven years to write around that very time. I was fed up. And I'm also fed up with us um, not applying management research that's there. So, you know, let's get on it. Let's get on with, and you know what? It's building a, a noble vision and a noble purpose. It takes time and it takes energy and it does take hard work. However, when it's in alignment with what your soul is wanting, it's not work. It's not work. It just is. Okay, but how are we going to convince the CEOs that literally have gold toilets in their homes that this is also good <laughs> for them? <laughs> well, we're, we are asking the top 10% to change their mindset. And yeah. I, would, I would really ask, are they fulfilled, Marie? Are they happy? Do you think that that's really what is bringing them joy? <laughs> no, no, 
it isn't. Like ultimately, what what an awakening company is is about feeling that the joy and the love and the presence that our souls are craving. And in most organizations, I go in and it feels dead. Like I go in and you can feel that. I'm sure you've had this experience too, Marie, and there's this kadunk. You're like, oh my gosh. I want to go into organizations and feel like there's a live jungle. Like things are pulsating and vibrant and happy and joyous. And I ultimately think we really do have to, and our environment is so key and the context in which we work is also so key. Um, you know, like for example, I have art on my walls. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> yeah, and you know, just creating a different, there's more art. The sea goddess tarot over there, you might see a bit of a mess too. More art on the walls. So it's about creating context in which organizations can thrive um, as well. And creating a human and humane experience. Because ultimately what we do to somebody else, we're just doing to ourselves. Awesome. Well, Catherine, um, so managers, CEOs, whether you run a, a small company, a large company, um, middle managers can benefit from this, right? Uh, yes. Really, anyone in an organization and who wants to organize differently can benefit from the Awakening Company. Somebody said it's kind of like a cross between self-help and, and business. Um, it really is a merger of so many different traditions and a merger of also people's thought from around the world. We have contributors from India, from China, from Europe, from North America. Um, so it really is an amalgamation of thought on how we can organize better together and create a different world together. It's, there's different stages of work. It's like work for the sake of the work, work on ourselves, and working more consciously together. And that's what the Awaken Company um, really speaks to. Hmm. Now, in the book, there was um, a section where you were actually talking about time off. And there are companies that give unlimited time off. How does that work? So Blue Era gives unlimited time off. and it works just great. <laughs> we trust our people and, and no one abuses it. People do, people do take time off uh, and it creates a whole different frame for working together. So imagine I say to you, okay, Marie, we're going to work together and uh, you have a limited vacation. You know what you need to get done, but I'm not going to tell you when and how to do it. And that's the way we work here. It's, there's been no issues around it. It's just, it's made life, it's made life easier for so many. And we're, we have a lot of um, moms and dads. So it also really helps when they want to go to a concert or be with their kids or, and, and those who don't, if they want to go skiing or if they need a, a day to themselves, no problem, no questions asked. So it creates a healthy environment. And also trust has been shown, um, to uh, in a high trust environment has been shown to be 300% more profitable than a low trust environment. So it's almost like a lever on trust, like, hey, I trust you, do what's right. And I trust you to do the right thing. And trusting the person to know what that right thing is. Absolutely, absolutely. Kind of like when I tried Periscope yesterday. I'm like, well, Marie says to try. I'm just going to jump in and try because I trusted you. You know? Oh, wow. I'm so glad that I did. It was fun. Actually, the re you said I'm the reason you're on Periscope. The reason <laughs> that, that I'm on Periscope is the person that I'm going to, that I thought I was supposed to interview tomorrow and we had a, a mix up. And um, his name is 2020, the one in Australia. 
I've seen him doing Periscope, and then I finally got, because I my Galaxy Note, it wouldn't work. So now I got a new, I got an iPhone 5S, and I can do it. And I'm doing, so I'm Marie Bernard on Periscope. Uh, Catherine is Awakened Company on Periscope and on Twitter. If you don't know what Periscope is, it's, um, it's video, it's like a video Instagram type of thing, uh, and it's owned by Twitter, it's connected to Twitter, and people can watch live, they can watch on the replay, and they can share it, and, and it's mostly on the cell phone, but you can also watch on the computer. If you go to, it's periscope.tv forward slash awakened company, or Marie Bernard, and um, yeah, it's it, it's fun, because then you you got to show us behind the scenes at the CTV studios yesterday. Totally, and that was that was just a great example, what you gave, of our interconnectedness. How we are not isolated beings. We're all in this together. So some of our greatest challenges, like climate change, like non-state actors, um, acting, uh, like poverty, uh, these are going to be solved by us working differently together. And I'm going to be slightly bold. I think in the future, Marie, that it really it's going to be all about social enterprises that we're all going to evolve into, much like Craig Kielberger and his brother Mark are doing from me to we. That we're ultimately, I think, business has to serve a deeper and greater need. So what about, because I've been thinking lately about how, I mean, I, I live in Vancouver, which is one of the most beautiful cities in the oh, world. Yeah. However, it's like a million dollars, literally, for a condo in, in nice parts of Vancouver. Uh, just a basic condo, no golden toilet or anything like that. Um, <laughs> and, the, the golden toilet. It's like I've it's, seen <laughs> things. It's ridiculous. It's like solid gold. But anyway, this is like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness um but i've been i mean i would like to be able to connect with the land more and eat food that comes from the ground in my backyard and in order to be able to financially create that i would have to live farther away and it's it's kind of interesting how cities now, I mean, Vancouver has done, done a pretty good job of creating green space and having community gardens. You're allowed to have um, egg-laying hens in your yard, but not everyone can afford a $3 million lot to have chickens in their yard. So do you think that people are going to start moving farther out and connecting through the internet, or how do you see the world evolving over the next 15, 20 years? I feel that smaller is going to be the next thing instead of larger. And we're already seeing that in terms of the shopping practice. I think this year was uh, the biggest backlash I've seen against Black Friday. Um, so I think smaller and tinier is going to become the way of the future versus um, gold toilets. <laughs> I really, I feel that that is going to be the way. And, and with that ethos is going to be a new way. The importance is going to shift back onto meaning, family, community, and the sense we're all in this together. We're beginning to see a lot of corporate activism and social and shareholder activism. And I think we're going to see more and more of that. Like I loved Patagonia's campaign about basically fix your things, don't buy more, fix what you've got already. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that they're really trailblazing the way so that people don't need, want, crave the bigger, better. It's about what's the quality of experience. Well, this is, um, I mean, the needing and the wanting and the craving is really, 
the symptom of our lack of connection because we think that the newest phone, although I do love my new phone, <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's so much better than my other one. Um, <laughs> but I mean, we, we're we always needing the novelty, and then the people with the golden toilets are probably also, you know, using, generalizing here, but, you know, opiates and, you know, other, like, painkillers and, and things like that. I mean, we're at a time where we have so much, and yet drug addiction and and abuse is at an all-time high, as far as I know. I mean, we're just getting more and more disconnected, and our consumerism, but, but part of it is if we all stop buying, then that creates fear because our economy is based on more, 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 more. So how do we balance all of this? I guess, I mean, you're probably going to say, what's the smallest thing we can start with, right? What's the smallest thing we can do? And um, we've bought in that growth is the way. And I would ask, is that true? We've bought into the fact that we expect short-term profits to go up. Why? Like we've created quite, quite a system here. And the invitation is to create another form of being and doing that fulfills our soul. Where we're not on antidepressants, on opiates, on where one in two people in the workplace haven't suffered mental illness, some form of mental illness. Wow. Like we can do better. And that's, and to make it doable, I think we get back to, as you said, what's the smallest thing we can do? And at Blue Era, we do things like stillness breaks, where we call whoever wants to come in just to gather and sit in stillness. And we do a meditation together. We do yoga together. We have friends at work. So it's an invitation. And it might feel a little bit scary and a little bit intimidating to try. And believe me, when I go into board boardrooms and I say, okay, time, we're going to try this, you should see the looks I get. And then after we've done it a few times, people are sharing about how they continued the practice. So, the, the, you know, think about energizing, sustaining, and regenerating. And regeneration, I think, is what we need in our society right now. And that's to be creative and innovative. And what Christopher's book is about peace. And just, um, I think we need to get back to, back to basics and find, our, find ourselves again. I've been learning that, I mean, our, our brains, we need novelty. Um, what happens is that when something's new, we get hit, a hit of dopamine and other neurotransmitters that make us pay attention. And then when the novelty wears off, it's because our brain has wired itself so that that is now normal and we just are on autopilot. So mm -hmm. part of the reason that things get boring is because our brains are so efficient that we're running on autopilot. And really, the way to keep everything fresh, novel, and interesting isn't to always be having new and different experiences and new toys and new people. It's to be mindful and present because actually every moment is new and novel. We just don't notice it because we're so busy on autopilot. Totally, and we all want oxycontin or, or oxytocin. Oxytocin. Oxytocin <laughs> is good too, you know. <laughs> oxytocin. And how do we get oxytocin? By sitting and talking to each other. By sitting in community and talking to each other. So let's elevate that. Let's have a real conversation. 
and <laughs> and yes you know um, social media is great and we're all getting little every like and everything we're getting these little hits of good chemicals they aren't long lasting though what we're craving is like for example I love this this interview with you like it's an actually real engaged interaction I might not be able I can see you on the screen I can feel you it's not quite the same as when you're here because I bet you a person Marie um, but that's what our soul is craving is to actually talk to people and to connect with people in a real way not not um, not that quick like All right. Well, we have been speaking with Catherine Bell. She's the author of The Awakened Company, and she is the co-founder. Are you the CEO of Blue Era? A co-founder of Blue Era. Co-founder yeah. co of Blue Era. Era. Blah, my mouth is not working right now. Um, and we are just about out of time. So I'm wondering, um, well, first of all, if people want to get the book, they can go to awakencompany.com. NamastePublishing.com. You can get it where any anywhere books are sold, right? You can get anywhere where books are sold, and there's a list on the website, Amazon.com. And even Marie, just take the book for example. Do you know how many hands and hearts and heads have been put into that book? So many. And I just want to acknowledge that, and I just want to say thank you because you've been helping to bring it to life. My pleasure. I'm. To I. I think we all need to wake up, and humanity has so much potential to be so great. Totally. Totally. And we. Yeah. Yeah. We we can solve these challenges by working together differently. Like I. I just I believe in in us. I believe in us. I can tell you're so passionate about it. I can see it's almost like you're welling up with emotion uh, mm -hmm. on the video. So if you want to see Catherine's reaction on her face, the expression on her face, you can go to <laughs> youtube.com forward slash spiritual show and watch this uh, mm -hmm. on the YouTube channel. And so Catherine, um, oh, I'm sorry. I don't want to. <laughs> no, it's it's healthy. It's healthy. Yeah. It's, it's what we're standing for, Marie. It's we need feeling like let's bring hearts back into companies. This is normal when we care about something. And yet we've been taught to put put our you know big face on. <laughs> and there's some other terms for that, but and and let's be let's be real and let's you know let's let's solve this together. I don't think I don't think we have a moment to lose. Well, I'm so thankful that people like you, Catherine, are working so hard to um, change the, the corporate environment and the way that we do business. Um, because if not you, who, who would be doing it? So thank you. Um, is there anything that you want to leave us with before we say goodbye? Mm. I really want people to know and to feel that this is possible and that they can do it. We can do it. We're in this together. And there isn't any limit. The limits we're creating are limits that we're putting on ourselves. That nobody wants to live in fear going to work. Nobody wants to be disengaged. And we can do better together. We can work more consciously together and begin with what is the smallest thing that you can do. And the smallest thing might be sitting in silence for a minute.
Awesome. Well, it's been such a pleasure speaking with you. Again, the name of the book is The Awakened Company, and the name of the author is the lovely Catherine Bell, and you can follow her at Awakened Company all over the place. She's The Awakened Company on Facebook, Awakened Company on Twitter and Periscope, and awakenedcompany.com is the website. So thank you for being with us today. Thank you for engaging. If you are watching on Google Hangouts or on YouTube, um, please comment. We'd love to read your comments and I'm sure Catherine will be checking in to see what people have to say. Um, so let's, let's get a conversation going about where you see the world going, where you see business going, what's your vision for your life, for your company, um, and for humanity as we know it um so yeah get involved and tweet us and comment and we want to hear from you we do we do thank you so much marie we're we're in this together we'll solve it together and thank you thank you thank you thank you all right and i want to send lots and lots of love to you be well we both love you so much namaste namaste